Let me see if I understand you correctly. Martin Fitzgerald is far from harmony, never to be heard from again. Precisely. Any threat Fitzgerald posed to the Cranes has been eliminated. So there's no problem with you telling me the truth? What truth? Was Martin Fitzgerald Pilar's husband or not? And what hold does he have on the Crane family that has you and your father running scared? Mm. Speak up, Julian. I didn't hear you. Silence is golden ivy. You should try it sometime. Oh, oh, yes. I should have known that all of your big talk about handling Martin Fitzgerald was just crane propaganda. Vampires are more likely to get a suntan than for you to tell the truth. Don't speak ill of your family, dear. Well, either Martin Fitzgerald is dead and you're hiding it, or he's alive and he knows something so insidious about the Cranes that you and your father are terrified of him ever setting foot in harmony again. What an active imagination you have, my sweet. It's pity you don't use it with me in bed. Which is it, Julian? What's the truth about Martin Fitzgerald? In case you've yet to realize I'm not answering your questions, just pray for all of our sakes that dead or alive, the man known as Martin Fitzgerald never comes back to harmony again. Never. Now, uh, won't Julian Crane be surprised to find that little old me, Martin Fitzgerald, is back in harmony? You won't be the only one. Park, Mama. Teresa's expecting you, and I'm working security for the tree lighting. Okay. I want to light the candles for your father and your brother Antonio, and then we'll go to the tree lighting, oh, Luis. A waste of time. <sighs> father in heaven, please keep watch over my husband, Martin, and my firstborn son, Antonio. Keep them safe and guide them back home to us soon. Amen. Isn't it a little too late for soon? Antonio's been gone for years, and Papa, he's never coming back. You don't know that for certain, Luis. Hell, I don't. He skipped out on me three times in New Mexico. He wants nothing to do with his family anymore. Nada. I still have faith in my husband. I still have hope that I'll see him again. You wouldn't even recognize him if you saw him. That beard. I would know my husband, no matter how much his appearance All right, changed. forget what he looks like. What about his heart? You know, the Martin Fitzgerald that I found in New Mexico was nothing like the father that I remembered. Or the husband that you describe. The fact is, that whole trip to New Mexico was a waste of time. Should've let Sheridan go by herself. Well, Louise, what's done is done. Yeah. She suckered me one more time. You know, she actually had me believing that she was different from the rest of her rotten family. Sharon is nothing like Julian, her brother, or her father, Alistair. That I am certain of. All right, all right. Look, I don't even want to think about her, much less talk about her, okay? You brought her up, Louise. What's that supposed to mean? You tell me. Well, I went to Lowell's department store, like you suggested, and bought her this expensive compact to. Replace the one that I'd accidentally broken in Santa Fe. Didn't she like it? Oh, well, she said she did. It wasn't five minutes before I saw it in the trash. And how did I ever think that she was different from the rest of the cranes? Thanks again for dinner, Hank. Oh, my pleasure. really thoughtful of Luis to give me this compact. I'm so glad I found it in the trash after I accidentally threw it in there. I would hate for Luis to think that I threw it away the minute he turned his back. Hello, Teresa. So has your boyfriend shown up yet? <laughs> Where can 
they be, Simone? Why aren't Miguel and Charity here? Hi, Kay. Reese, you need a haircut. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one, Kay. I, I got it one for you, too. So you can wear it tonight, so everyone will know that we're dating. Go on, put it on. <laughs> yeah, Kay. You deserve it. I wish I had my camera. <laughs> Where's Miguel and Charity? I was just wondering the exact same thing. They went to the book cafe for hot chocolate. You knew this whole time and you didn't tell me? Oh. I'll go save us a spot up front. You know, girls, I know each of you would love to get picked to light the Christmas tree by Santa, but don't you think it'd be wonderful if he picked Charity? I mean, she's been through so much. Losing her mother, losing her home. And this is her first Christmas in harmony with all of us, her new family, and Miguel. And I just think that if she was picked and you all were happy for her, that it would be the best way to make her feel like she's a permanent part of our lives. Don't you? Yeah, Mom. I'm really rooting for charity. Me too, Mom. Me too. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> You're such a hypocrite, Simone. Look who's talking. You'd die if Santa picked Cherry to light the tree. He's not going to. He's going to pick me, and I'm going to choose Miguel to help me light it. Once Miguel sees that I'm the most beautiful girl in Harmony, he'll think he was nuts for ever wanting Charity. It's so beautiful this time of year. The snow, the smile on everybody's faces, the pretty decorations. This year is going to be the first Christmas without my mom. My first Christmas alone. Charity, you are not alone. I mean, you have your new family, the Bennetts. I and mean, they're wonderful people. And they love you. I know. And you have me. I mean, we can make new memories together. Starting tonight. I'm so lucky, Miguel. I feel so blessed to have you in my life. Sometimes it overwhelms me. I feel the same way. I mean, Charity, you've changed my life. And, and you have a whole new life ahead of you. I just want to be part of that every step of the way. I want that, too. I bet Santa's going to pick you to light the tree. And when he does, will you pick me to help you flip the switch? Of course, Miguel. Great. Santa's been so good to me this year. I wonder what else he has in store for me. Ho, ho, ho! Come on, Timmy. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, just saying that rock gives me a bad taste in my mouth. And as for this revolting get-up, I'm going to have nightmares for months. <sighs> Timmy, having the time of life. If you're getting into the Christmas spirit again, so help me, I'll use you for a Yule log. <sighs> it's just, Timmy's so happy to be around people without having to go into doll mode. Princess, please, if Timmy does a good job, could he meet some people his own age? Timmy wants a more active social life. Timmy should be glad he has any life at all. You're a doll, dimwit, and don't you forget it. Jimmy, sorry, Tabitha. How much for the park? This bag of tools is getting really heavy. We're almost there. And charity is almost history. Assuming Tabitha's plan works. Tonight will do the trick, I'm sure of it. The Santa they hired to pick the girl to light the tree with a boy of her choice is safely at home, out cold, after drinking one of my infamous hot toddies, thus allowing me to take his place. So while I'm doing my Santa shtick, you, my little elfin Edison, will use the tools in the bag to short-circuit the tree's electrical wires. And then, when Charity and Miguel flick the switch to light it,
Lights out for them. Finally and permanently. <sighs> Come on, Timmy. I would hold the hand of the one who can lead me places And kiss the lips of the one who can sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of a bird I knew could take me high as breathe and breathe out You keep me alive You are That's how you eat a hot chestnut without burning your fingers. Let me try. Perfect. Just like you. I don't think I've ever smelled chestnuts before. I really like the way they smell. You know, I read that smell is the strongest sense when it comes to memory. How the scent of something can bring you back instantly to the first time you smelled it. Hmm. Well, since I'm not remembering anything, I guess this time with you is going to be my first memory of chestnuts. What's yours? Hmm. It could be one of my first memories. More like a flash, really. I see my father roasting chestnuts in the fireplace at home. I'm sitting on my mama's lap with my brothers and sisters, and we're waiting for my father to give each of us a warm chestnut. Everyone is so happy, and the tree smells so good. And there's music. There's carolers outside singing Joy to the World. I didn't know it at the time, but that was the last Christmas that I spent with my father before he went away. Maybe it's silly, but I can't eat a chestnut without thinking of Papa and how much he loved us. Well, maybe he'll be back this Christmas. I doubt it. And even if he did come back, he's probably changed so much I wouldn't even recognize him. Well, don't give up hope, Miguel. I mean, think of all the miracles that happened to us. Maybe a miracle will bring him back this Christmas to Harmony. My mom would like that. Wouldn't you like that? Well, it depends on why he went away in the first place. I mean, unless he has a good reason why he left us, and he can explain what Mr. Crane said about him stealing money, then Papa's coming back would cause more pain than happiness. I'm sorry that it's all so confusing. Me too. I know my father coming back for Christmas would be the best gift my mother could get. But it would be the worst for my brother Luis. Well, you can't see Papa for who he is any more than you can see Sharon for the spoiled, rich Deb that she is. I don't like seeing you so angry, Luis. I'm not angry. At least not about Sheridan. And she is who she is. I blame myself for thinking that I could afford to buy anything that Sheridan would think was good enough. I mean, it's just like I said at the Bennetts. Rich and poor can't mix. We're from two different worlds. Luis, it saddens me so that you feel this way. I just don't get why she was so different with me in Santa Fe. She was nice, considerate, decent. She acted like a real person through some pretty tough times. But that's all it was, you know? It was an act. Can't believe I ever thought that Sheridan would be real about anything. But it's more than that. You've been hurt. By Sheridan? No way. You have to care about someone to be hurt by them. And I couldn't care a lick about Sheridan Crane. Who's that? Ethan, about my boyfriend. The truth, Teresa, the carolers are going the wrong way. Okay, look, you're on the tree lighting committee. Can you tell them all the people are over here? Yeah, you're, you're right. I, I, excuse us. We'll be right back. Oh, we'll be waiting. 
Okay, Teresa, look. After you set the caroler straight, you need to admit to Ethan and Gwen that your secret boyfriend is none other than Ethan himself. I know, I know, and I don't want to, but there's no way around it. Gwen won't leave here without seeing my boyfriend, and since I don't have one to show her, the jig is finally up. I've had so many close calls, Whitney. I've had so many narrow escapes. I can't believe my luck has finally run out. Well, you're gonna have to face it, Teresa. There's no way out of it this time. You wait and see, Ethan. Teresa is going to admit that I was right all along, that you are the guy she's got a crush on. Gwen, I'm sorry, but I think you're wrong. There has to be a guy. Ethan, if you're naive enough to believe that, you must still believe in Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Merry Christmas! May your stockings be stuffed with locusts. Timmy loves it here. Everything's so pretty, and everyone's smiling. The only time Talbot smiles is when she, Fluffy's chasing Timmy. Uh, I promise you, I'll be smiling ear to ear when Charity and Miguel are zapped into oblivion like the two oversized pests that they are. <laughs> Timmy, look! The electrifying couple is here. <laughs> They look so happy. Well, of course they do, Tim Tim. They have no idea that they have such a short time to live. Now we'll be late for the tree line. Yeah, okay. I guess if someone was here, they're gone now. It must have been a stray dog or a cat looking for food. Yeah, I suppose. Come on, I don't want to be late. I want to get to the park right away because I only have until the tree is lit to enjoy the celebration. Why is that? Well, because I have to go to the cranes immediately afterwards and get the silver ready for the party Mrs. Crane is giving tonight. I hate that you work so hard for them. You know, you wouldn't have to if Papa hadn't bailed out on us the way he did. Please, please, I don't mind working. You like to slave to that family. You put in so many hours in the Crane Mansion. You know, you've yet to tell me why you invited the Bennetts and the Russells to a Christmas party. Is it possible they have something to do with a secret I'm sure you're hiding from me? Oh, I already told you, Julian. I don't have a secret. You're lying. Maybe your secret has something to do with Sam Bennett, hmm? Ivy, forget about the past. It's over. And only you and I know about it. <laughs> Sam Bennett, why on earth would I share a secret with Harmony's chief of police? Well, maybe he discovered something in your past, a criminal record, perhaps. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Julian, yes, I was convicted of, um, nymphomania. <laughs> no, seriously, dear. Is Sam Bennett blackmailing you for invitations to our home so his mousy little wife can come visit the rich and famous? And bring other exotic gifts like her tomato soup cake? <laughs> I shudder to think what ghastly concoction she'll bring to this party. Whatever it is, I'm sure the recycling people will run screaming when they see it. It's enough, Julian. You've had enough fun at my expense. You can stop joking now. I could. Or I could ask Sam Bennett what he really does know about your past. Hmm? Wouldn't that be an interesting game for an otherwise dull Christmas party to let Sam Bennett tell what he knows of everyone's past, starting with you, my loving, innocent wife? No. Christmas in Harmony must be much different from Paris. Hmm. It is different. Better, though, because it's home. Hank, have you seen Luis? I don't know. I brought him home from the airport. I mean, if he's not here, he will be. I mean, Luis and Plara never miss the annual tree lighting. Did you say Luis is going to be here? Yeah, why? Uh, oh, I, I just wanted to thank him again for the compact. Why, to think I almost lost it. Please, sing. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks. Okay. I am so eager to hear what you have to say that I just couldn't wait any longer. So out with it. Tell us all about your nice, rich boyfriend. Well, he 
is nice. And he is rich, but that's not why I fell for him. The truth Fans is... Fans are reporting for duty, ma'am. Oh. Just tell me and my elf what we're supposed to do. Well, Santa, are you okay? Oh, well, a bit overweight, cholesterol through the roof. No, no, I, I mean, I already gave you the instructions for tonight. You did? Well, yeah, don't you remember? And why does your voice sound different? Oh, <laughs> well, um, I'm going down with a cold, and oh. medicine I took seems to space me out a bit. <laughs> oh, um, well, I'll go over your duties again, but we can't afford to pay extra for the elf. Oh, no, no, I didn't expect that. No, old Santa just brought him a long wreck stranded attraction. <laughs> oh. Um, I am sorry, but I can't take my chances on Santa messing up. You and me both, kid. We'll be back just as soon as we show Santa the ropes, okay? Okay. That's great. Come on, sweetie. Come on. You know, maybe we should talk to Teresa later when she's not so busy. No. I am not going to be satisfied until I hear from Teresa's own lips that you are the guy she's in love with. Because then, you'll know that I'm right. And then when you propose to me again... I'll say yes. You will? If the neighborhood knows where you hide that key, Mom, you should put it someplace else. No, Luis. Your father and your brother know where I keep that key. That way, when they come if home... If they come home. When they come home, they will be able to open the door. Well, I don't know about Antonio. The only door that's going to be open for Papa is the cell door. Louise, but for what? It's Christmas. A time of hope and miracle, not anger and recrimination. Well, I feel the way I feel. So do I, hijo. I still love my husband, and I'd give anything to see him again. Let's go. We're gonna be late. surprised to know that I'm here. Not half a surprise that Julian Crane's gonna be. Well, I'm surprised at you, Ivy. Why are you so adamant that I not ask Sam Bennett about your past? I know you're joking, Julian, but Sam, Chief Bennett, may not see it that way. Well, I know the man's a Neanderthal, but even his kind have a sense of humor. Oh, as usual, you're missing the point. No, well, that's not all I'm missing. We Cranes have few, if any, friends here in Harmony. What if word of your little joke spread around town? What if the tabloids got a hold of it? Oh, they'd have a field day. I don't know about you, Julian, but I, for one, don't want my life to be grist for some gossip mill. Why do I still have the feeling that you're nervous about Sam Ben probing into your past? Oh, I'm not nervous, Julian. I'm annoyed at your juvenile notion of parlor games. Even if Sam Bennett looked into my past, he wouldn't discover anything that you don't already know. But if you want to grill the chief of police in front of witnesses about your wife, then be my guest. Just be sure and tell Alistair all about it. You know how he loves a good joke. <laughs> I was only teasing, darling. You know, I never do anything to arouse suspicion about the family, the outsiders, especially Sam Bennett. The last thing we need is for Harmony's finest to start digging up the past. Gave them an excuse. They might even reopen the Martin Fitzgerald case. And that is one closet full of skeletons it needs to stay shut. Well, I'm glad to see you're finally seeing things my way. Mm -hmm. Come on, Julian, pick up. I'm back. And guess where I'm calling from. Okay, um, all the girls who want to will come forward, and you'll pick one of them to light the tree, and then she'll pick a boy to help her pull the switch. No, Santa remembers now. And this is the switch they'll use. No, oh, what a spectacle it will make. Oh. 
Please just don't mess up. <laughs> don't you worry, ma'am. Sandra and his helper will get the job done. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, come on, wait. Come on, Timmy. Come on, Timmy. You mean it, Gwen? Yes, I do. Ask me to marry you again, and I'll accept. As long as your proposal comes from your home. Look, it will. I promise. And there's one condition. All of this nonsense with Teresa and her alleged boyfriend has to be over. Look, once she proves that I've been right this whole time, we can pick up where we left off. Well, I hope you're right about Teresa for our sake, but I'm just not sure you are. Remember the prophecy, Timmy. Charity's powers will increase 1,000-fold if she lives to love the boy who saves her from two fires. And that boy is Miguel, and he's winning her heart. We must eliminate them both, and we will, once you sabotage that switch. Timmy's working as quick as he can. Good, good. Soon there'll be enough electricity running through that switch. It'll fry anyone who touches it. <laughs> Charity and Miguel are in for an extra crispy Christmas. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. If you answer it, Julian, we'll be late for the tree lighting ceremony. Just no. let one of the servants take a message. It's all right. The sooner we ooh and our way through another tedious local event, the sooner I'll be back home in front of the fire. Crane residence. I want to speak to Julian Crane. I'm sorry. He and Mrs. Crane just left for the tree lighting at Lighthouse Park. May I ask who's calling? Uh, just an old friend home for a Christmas surprise. I'll see him at the tree lighting. Papa's home. Oh, look, there's Hank with Sharon and Crane. I hate seeing him with Sheridan. He'll only end up getting hurt. Luis, Sheridan would never intentionally hurt anyone. Yeah, I guess there's nothing to do but be there for Hank when Sheridan dumps him like that compact that I gave her. I still can't believe that Sheridan would throw a gift away. Mama, I saw it in the trash at the book cafe. I mean, if she didn't like it, which is pretty damn obvious, why didn't she just tell me? No, I'd be a hypocrite and lie to my face. Now, you should live and learn. I'll tell you one thing. Learn my lesson with Sheridan Crane. Sheridan Crane and Sam's brother Hank. You think it's serious, Chris? Well, Hank seems serious. But, you know, Sheridan certainly seemed interested in when Luis was going to be here tonight. Luis and the Crane. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> when? Ethan talked me into standing in line. He thinks I'm the prettiest girl in Harmony. Oh, I'm sure your boyfriend thinks so, too. What is taking Santa so long? I can't wait for him to pick this year's winner. You were so sweet for wanting me to win. Of course, Charity. I mean, I live to see you happy. Lose the fork tongue, Kay. Here comes Santa Claus. Oh! Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! Good people of harmony! The time has come for Santa to pick the girl who light this year's Christmas tree. Now, ah, let me see. Who is going to get it?
park. It's going to be around here somewhere. I got to forget something like that. Well, I'll be damned. They're throwing a party to welcome me home. Because we've arrived just in time for the big event. All we have to do is feign interest, clap when the locals clap, and we can be on our way. Oh, you are so jaded, Julian. Where's your holiday spirit? At home in my brandy decanter. The size of this crowd. And don't these people have anything better to do than stand around slack-jawed waiting to witness the miracle of electricity? Sammy, you may not want to be an in-law to the Cranes, but, um, Poison Ivy's looking right at you. Oh, tonight will be different, Sam. I have something special planned for you. You speaking to me? No, Julian. I was just thinking about my Christmas party. I want it to be extra special this year. A memorable night for all of us. It's cold out here. Let's take a walk. Yeah. Hey, what's up, bro? Sure. You should get in line with the beautiful girls at Harmony. I don't think so. Come on, you'd win hands down. And then you could pick me to help you light the tree. Sorry, Hank, but I don't do lineups. Not for you or for Louise. Well, it doesn't matter. You're already a winner with my family, especially with Grace and the girls. I'll bet you they're already wondering if we're going to get married. If they are, then they can stop, because I'm not planning on marrying anyone anytime soon. There's no one else in your life now? Absolutely, positively no one. Good. I don't like competition. I don't need some chump wooing you away before I get the chance to show you what a great guy I am. <laughs> Not to mention modest, too. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a some hot cider. I'll be right back. Okay? Luis. I just wanted to thank you again for the compact. It really came in handy today. Would you get some sort of sick pleasure thinking you can play me for a chump? What are you talking about? I know what you thought of the compact that I gave you. You know, that, that's okay, it's not important. But whatever rich girl game you're playing, it's not working. Won't be long now, Teresa. You mean before Santa picks a winner? <laughs> before the truth about your boyfriend comes out? And when it does, Ethan and I will be getting engaged. What? Mm -hmm. It's because of you that I'll soon be Mrs. Ethan Crane. Ho, ho, ho! Santa has made his choice. This year, the tree will be lit by... Young lady. <laughs> Tell us your name. Charity. Charity Standish. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Talbot took a sweet little time picking Charity. I wanted it to look convincing, dimwit. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Charity. Which boy are you going to pick to help you light the tree? I choose Miguel Lopez Fitzgerald. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, kiss my sugar plums. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> Miguel, Santa says, come on down. Charity, tell the finally won. Charity Standish is Grace and Sam's niece. And that would even remotely interest me because... Your paper, Harmony Herald, covered the story. Mm. She's the girl who lost her mother in that awful fire in Castleton this past autumn. <clears throat> the boy, Miguel, Lopez Fitzgerald, Large younger son. Fascinating. You've gotten to know the locals very well, Ivy. Why you'd want to, I have no idea. 
I want people to think of the Cranes as being part of Harmony, not apart from it. Ethan will need their support when he goes into politics. Well, why can't we just buy the votes like we always have? Oh, you'll be serious for once, Julian. Stop being the elitist snob that we all know you are. Just look around, pretend to be interested in something. That's odd. What's odd? Santa and his little helper moving away from the tree lighting area instead of waiting to have a picture taken of those brats when they flip the switch. Well, I'm sure even Santa's pressed for time with Christmas just around the corner. Maybe I should ask Santa to bring Martin Fitzgerald home for the holidays. Wouldn't that surprise everyone? Don't you even joke about Martin Fitzgerald. You pray he stays far away from him. Seems louder. Must be getting close to where the action is. Another couple blocks in there. Luis, what did you mean when you said I was playing some rich girl game with you? I just wanted you to know that I know how you feel about the compact that I gave you. That's all. Case closed. Merry Christmas. Luis, I said I liked it. You still have it. Teresa, now that the contest is over and there's no chance of you being interrupted again, why don't you tell us what you were going to tell us earlier? Yeah, Teresa, tell us about your boyfriend. My boyfriend... I um... could... I could make it easier for you. Your boyfriend, is he here? Yes. So why don't you just go tap him on the shoulder? Come on, Timmy. Hurry. Timmy ain't being a junior terrorist. Miguel and Charity are nice kids. Timmy's so sorry that they have to die. Mm, I'm sorry too, Timmy. I'm sorry it's taken so long to make them die. Come on, come on. Make it a merry bloody Christmas. Five, four, three. 